Hey everybody, this is Perch. Our so, so I'm listening to another video uh, that, that Zach had done about, um, uh, you know, why are, why are people acting as if the comic industry is, is ending while simultaneously, um, you know, making a lot of statements about it's as healthy as ever. And uh, there's, there's a good point there and everything. I mean, just I, part of that's, the, you know, the, unfortunately, the simple answer, the Occam's razor answer is that what do people do on social media? They, they dunk on people and they uh, post kind of various, you know, <laughs> hypocritical statements depending on which way the wind blows that day. That's, that's what they do. It's hard to take any of that stuff that seriously. And that's, that's probably the big lesson that we have to keep reminding ourselves, all of us, every single day is like, you want to go on to Twitter and say, all right, we're having a meaningful conversation. I'm, I'm, I'm digesting and understanding what this person's trying to say here. And uh, I'm trying to, to determine the validity of it, truth or false, everything. But what we're forgetting is that the person on the other end of that phone, the person who's posting the original tweet is chances are, They've gotten out of bed at whatever in the morning. They've wandered to the, the toilet. They're sitting on the toilet, and they're trying to think of something witty as kind of the first thought to the day. They've already kind of doom-scrolled through several trending topics of things to be pissed about and this outrage or that outrage. They've looked at some of the direct messages in Twitter, like, can you believe that this artist said this, and I heard that this guy is actually doing this thing? And then they go on to say something like, hey... Comic industry is doing great, but this person is is going to the bathroom while they're posting that. So, you know, you have to weigh that into account while you're taking this comment seriously. So, and and <laughs> this is it's a hard thing to get your head around because you're like, yeah, but they're posting this, so I should react to it. Absolutely, you can react to whatever you want, of course. But keep in mind, you're reacting to somebody's nonsense thought that they're not thinking through. They're not putting a lot of thought. Was it uh, Mark Brooks had, had done a tweet talking about wanting to punch people in the throat because it, it hurts and very effective. Why would he post that? I, I, who knows? We could spend hours, and I'm sure some people will, trying to come to, you know, trying to understand what's behind that weird tweet. But there's a good chance what's behind that weird tweet is a little bit of a hangover, maybe some weed, and uh, just, just general apathy or, or lack of thinking. There may be something greater behind it, but there could also very well just be nothing behind it because uh, vacuous is kind of the word of the day for a lot of this stuff. And it's important for us to, to kind of keep that in mind. But there was a different part to the kind of the conversation, which is why are, you know, why look at all these decisions. People are making all these short-term decisions. And I think that's true. A lot of things in comics feel very short-term from the planning of how characters done to the relaunch strategy. I mean, you can, you can look at variants and say that's short-term thinking. It is, but just as short-term are things like, uh, you know, why rebooting the title, uh, hiring the writer for six issues and then just saying, ah, forget about it and, and move it on to something else. There's tons of decisions that are getting made that have no long-term, uh, you know, merit behind it, have no long-term thinking behind it. They're just, everybody is working in a six month or shorter cycle. It's one of the reasons that, that fact is a bit, a big part of a lot of the videos I've made of like, Hey, um, why do people behave the way they do? Why do people act the way they do? Well, because they're, they, they're, they're thinking in a two to six month time frame. That's as far out as they're thinking. So when you think in that kind of time frame, you make lots of crazy decisions. Think for a moment in your life right now. If you knew that you had, you know, six months to live, you would do radically different things with your life. You might go check off a bunch of bucket list items. You might do a bunch of things you wouldn't normally do. I'll give you a, a that's kind of grim. So I'll give you something a little bit easier to think about. Imagine, if you will, that you got a new job, right? You got a new high paying job, a job that's going to pay you more, double your salary, in fact. And it starts in six months. And all you had to do was, you know, keep working in your current job for the next six months. Doesn't matter what you do. You're getting that new job no matter what. So that new job is locked in. For the next six months, you can do whatever you want. What do you think you would do? A lot of people would go and immediately start to become insane assholes at work. If there are no consequences to it, and they're moving on anyway, screw it. They would just start acting very, very randomly. That's a good way to... to 
kind of highlight a lot of what goes in in comics. And by the way, not everybody. You we you talk we on this channel and other places we've talked to plenty of writers who are horrified by that idea. And you could almost when I talk to somebody within the first thirty seconds, you can tell what mentality you're dealing with in terms of is this person a long term thinker? Is this person a short term thinker? Many people historically who were in comics were long term thinkers. You uh, go back and you listen to the video with like Carl Potts, Jim Salakrup. Uh, you, you, you those guys. They they all, you notice if you will pick up how they are talking in long term arcs, long term planning. We're going to do this with this character. It's going to pay off in five years. Listen to the interview with Rachel Pollock. Here's somebody who came on to write Doom Patrol, and in her comments, notice that she's talking about well, we wanted to set up this so we could pay it off over here, and and there's in just the the every sentence that gets talked about is long term thinking is planning. It's it's inherent in everything. And and some current writers, if you if you listen to the discussions with Sean Murphy, he's trying to kind of wrap his head around here's where things are trending, here's where things are going, here's what planning means. You look at the uh, interviews we've done with Jeff Thorne. He's talking about this is what I'm trying to set up in Green Lantern, which is a big story arc, which is going to lead to this or that or whatever else. You can tell uh, Philip Kennedy Johnson, Jim Zub, both of them, Talk about long-term plans. Talk about, I'm going to put this in place and get to this. Now, Zub did a very good job, I think, of in the interview noting that you may never get to that stuff. And he would know. He was on Champions and it got interrupted. And then a little bit more issues then got interrupted. So he's very aware of the fact that he can have long-term plans and he, as much as he wants. But the world could move in a different direction on it. And, I, I mean, I'm not, I, hopefully I'm not reading too much into it, but there's a sadness when you, when the, when the creator who likes long-term planning, uh, you know, faces that realization, they're not happy about it. They understand that's the world they live in and that's, that's being realistic and that's the right thing to do. But you could tell, like, they're like, I, I, you know, most, most creators, most writers would very much prefer to think long-term. So why don't creator, why don't a lot of people in comics these days think long-term? Well, I have this theory, and it's it's a depressing one. I'm not sure several of the people involved even know what long term means anymore. And what I mean by that is, I'm seeing a, a and I don't know generational. It, that's that's the wrong thing. So it's not really based on age. But I was again, I was back listening again to the interview with Zub, and he's talking about kind of how he plots things out and how he thinks about it. And I like, I do work for today and it pays off for the future. It just baked into all of his sentences is this concept of long-term is a concept of, I do this today. So I get this benefit tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. I've talked to more recent creators and they don't have any of that language. It is more like, yeah, I'm getting a mini series and I hope to get another mini series. And then you know, maybe there will be a gig, I'll do an anthology story, and then we'll see what happens, there'll be something after that. But it, the, the whole thinking around long-term, multiple projects, things spanning, is th there's almost, it's like people have accepted or maybe never been, you know, never had the possibility revealed to them that there could be more. Instead, their understanding of comics is baked in as short term. Now, imagine if you will, the last 10 years, let's say you came into comics in the last 10 years, and there's several creators now coming in who basically have less than 10 years of experience in comics, meaning they first started reading comics less than 10 years ago. If that is your perspective, if that, if just recent times is what you know, Consider that for a moment. That's that's sort of terrifying because what you've been exposed to, what is quote unquote normal to you is reboots, limited series, uh, very short term thinking, very stunt based planning, not not long storylines. The terrifying question I have is this. Have have we now got a sizable amount of people who work in comics that have no concept of long-term? Do we have a sizable amount of people in comics who do not even realize that long-term is a goal or a possibility to shoot for? Is, are, are we potentially entering a world where we're going to have to relearn 
long-term thinking and long-term storytelling. I think that a lot of lessons were, were learned in the 70s and the 80s around how to tell stories and how to do long-form planning and what it could mean financially and everything else. I think there are a lot of good lessons that were learned. I'm curious if, uh, if those lessons now have to be completely retaught because we've, we've moved away from them to such an extent that the people who are just involved do not even know, they don't know what they don't know, basically. I consider that. I, I don't think that it's a bunch of people who are going, crap, the world could uh, fall out from under us any minute now. We better, we better do some, you know, we better only think, plan to the short term because we don't know what tomorrow will hold. I don't think that the people are aware that, I, I don't think they're aware of even what a long-term plan could be. I think that's, um, that's actually where we are. And to me, that's a much scarier place. Let me know your thoughts. Long-term planning. Is it that people are purposefully deciding to plan short-term or are people just doing what they know? And because of the way the environment has been structured, it's now short-term. One, one of those is more depressing than the other. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course. And thanks for listening.